before we continue our, our prayer, I just want to uh, welcome our on, online congregation this morning. Welcome to you in the name of the Lord, and pray that your time with us will be blessed. Um, I also wanted to mention um, and express our Christian sympathy to the Adrians and families and their kinfolk in the passing and homegoing of Carolyn Adrianson. She died on November 18th. The calling hours will be here in our gym on Wednesday from 12 to 2, and the funeral will be here in our gym Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Um, so just to let you know that. And with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I add my amen to the songs and to Tim's prayer. And we acknowledge that you are worthy and that you are the overflowing fountain of all good, that you are good and you do good. Lord, your graciousness and your generosity, it never dries up. You are a fountain that never ceases. And we bless you for that. You are good even to your enemies, that they might be led to repentance. The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And we pray that the eyes would be open to see that. We pray you will bless the good news as it goes forth, the word of life, the gospel. We pray you'll bless it through our individual lives and the gatherings uh, where it's preached, the witnessing uh, as it's taught, and the work of missions, Lord. We pray that you would bless it. We pray that your will would be done as to our national and state elections, which seem to hang in the balance yet. We pray your hand would be upon our service personnel, Lord, as well as law enforcement and emergency uh, personnel as well. And Lord, as we close in upon uh, Thanksgiving and then Christmas, we pray you'll be with those particularly who have to be away from home in this time. And Lord, it'll be a different kind of Thanksgiving this year because of the COVID and because of the fears, but also the restrictions, Lord. But nonetheless, we pray that you would, um, that you would open our eyes to how much we have for which to give thanks to you, because you are an overflowing fountain of good, and you have poured out your goodness upon us. Would you remember those, Lord, who have life-threatening illness, cancer, or brain disease, or other debilitating diseases? Would you remember them and their families, and particularly those whose lives are uh, very much in the balance um, in these days? We pray your comfort for those who mourn, that you would be uh, with them. And um, Lord, we thank you for our, our dear sister who has gone home to be with you and the comfort it is to the family and to her church family here to know that she is safe at home with you and that by the grace of the Lord Jesus, one day we will be reunited. Thank you, Father, that even though we mourn, we don't mourn as those who have no hope but we are a people of hope because you are the God of hope. And we bless you for that. We pray, Father, that you'll be with those who have been afflicted with the COVID and uh, those, uh, we pray for your healing mercy. We also pray you'll be with those whose lives and whose work are adversely affected in connection with the COVID. Father, we pray that you would, that you would stir up our hearts to fresh thanksgivings and fresh love to you as we acknowledge your goodness and kindness to you. Um, thank you for the freedom that we continue to enjoy in this land, at least in some measure, and pray it may continue. But also, Lord, that you will help us to avail ourselves of that and not take it for granted. Lord, we ask these things now, each and all, praying your blessing upon the continuance of the service that we may continue to worship and lift up our hearts to you in praise and thanksgiving because you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, at this time, I'm going to turn the service over to you, Tom, and uh, he will be our uh, facilitator for our Thanksgiving testimonies. We said our theme verse is this morning already, and that says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And then in Hebrews chapter 13, verses uh, 15 and 16, it says, Therefore, by him let us continually offer 
the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. And uh, we'll just kick it off with those couple verses this morning. And if somebody has a praise, uh, we should all be thankful. And uh, is there someone that would like to uh, just kind of break the ice? I think Judy broke the ice. That was a tremendous testimony. We appreciate that. And uh, is there someone else that would like to share? Don't be bashful. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'll crack you guys some more. Uh, this has been a difficult year, and every time you turn around, everybody's complaining about what a horrible year 2020 was mm -hmm. and has been. And you can't wait for 2021. Well, I kind of remember saying that back in 2019 and 2018. And mm -hmm. So I just got to tell you, it might not be better yet. But we do know that it's going to be better. It's going to be better when we um, get to heaven, when we can be with Jesus. And I thank God immensely for the gift of faith that he has given me because that has been my mainstay through all these hard times. Um, I look at people who don't have the faith that we all enjoy, and I, I wonder how they do it. I wonder how So that being said, that is my biggest um, item to be grateful for. The rest is my, my husband and my family, my grandkids who are the light of my world. Um, and I'm thankful also for some of the things that I've learned this past year, like enjoying the slower pace. And um, we're being forced into it, and it's not like we've really asked for this, but there are some good things about being slower and not having a, a calendar that's crammed full of things to do and places to be. We have a chance to sit and think and, uh, and enjoy the people around us, even though it's a limited circle. But we can be grateful. We can be more grateful for these people as a result because they're who we have. We might not have everybody, but we do have those that are close. And I just, I want to encourage everybody to just keep looking for those silver linings because God has given them to us and they are a bright spot in our days. Thank you. Who else? We'll go this side. It's okay. That's okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, I was just sitting here thinking in response to the video with showing all the land and everything, and um, it was really, really hard to all of a sudden just not be able to see everybody that I normally see and have the freedom. It, it made me a little cranky very sad but um and i had said to dave here this that um <clears throat> i had said to dave last winter i wish you wouldn't put in such a monster garden this year because then i just have to process it all <laughs> and we don't need it anyway and blah 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 you know but he went ahead and put in a monster garden and went off stump grinding which thank god he could still do well, we had a tremendous harvest from that garden and from my garden as well. And then I, as I drive around Wayne County, I just love seeing the mucklands and love seeing things growing and farm machinery out. And I just, oh, it just does me such good. And just no matter what is happening with the illness and the lockdowns and stuff, 
our lives didn't change that much personally, and I'm thankful for that. We still were able at least to gather in food from our own land. And there's just something wonderful year after year after year, that steady thing. To me, that that's God says to me, things aren't changing that much. I'm still providing the bounty. And so I'm thankful, especially for that. Thank you. Who else? Yeah, I just, um, there's many things, and I'm sure that others will say the same, but I'm thankful for my wife and for my, our children and for our grandchildren who, um, well, they certainly keep us young, but make us old, too. Um, thankful the Lord has blessed our family with a, an addition, little porter, um, very smiley baby. And um, I'm thankful for our church family, too. Um, just, you know, we've walked together some 30 years, and uh, just the faithfulness and the steadiness and the love of God's people and their support and their encouragement. Um, it, you are family. And I thank God for that. And for the church and the, her faithfulness, um, the desire to, to be light. And uh, I thank the Lord for new people who come and who are becoming part of the family and have become part of the family. I give thanks for that. And I'm thankful to, um, I remember one of our people said a long time ago, he was sitting up in the balcony on the north side balcony. And he said, I am so thankful that God hasn't given up on me. And I'm so thankful for that, too. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Someone else, something that you're thankful for, something the Lord's blessed you with, you'd like to share? Good morning. I have been out of work since the middle of April, and the Lord has sustained us very well. And I wish on the one hand I could say, yes, I see why the Lord has left me hanging this long. Here's the lessons that I've learned. This was the grand design and reason. I'm afraid I can't say, say that. Maybe I'm not quite catching the message from the Lord just yet. However, he has been faithful throughout this entire time. I give him the praise and glory for it. And I start a new job tomorrow morning. So the Lord's still working on me as well, and I praise him for these opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, good morning, everyone. You know who I am, Ed Cooney, for those of you who are uh, relatively new. Anyhow, I suppose every, everyone is sitting here and saying, yes, I'm thankful for that and that and that. Pastor took uh, the first few things that I was going to say I was thankful for, and he said them, but I also am thankful for that. them. That means my wife, uh, my grandchildren, my children, I'm thankful for each and every one of them. Last night we had three grandchildren overnight, and as you can see, I'm missing my partner here this morning. Uh, but I was able to get out. Anyhow, uh, there have been many blessings come into my life over this past year, and uh, I, I just couldn't even start to mention them, but. I, ha I have started, but I could go on and on, and I'm sure each one of you, as I, as I mentioned mine, you would say the same, that you're also thankful for uh, the, s the same things. And the Lord certainly blesses each and every one of us. I'm thankful that uh, Wayne uh, did get a job now that the Lord has had this in mind all, all the way. 
all the time. And uh, Wayne was faithful enough to just wait upon the Lord. And he has delivered him to a job, and I, I hope that uh, things work out well for him. Uh, I was thinking the other day, uh, well, actually, one of the grandkids mentioned it, something about it. I've been uh, semi-retired for 30 years and fully retired for 15 years. And uh, the Lord certainly has uh, blessed me in that respect, but he keeps me busy uh, for sure. But how blessed it, it is to have a church family uh, to behind me too. And I just thank God for this, for each and every one of you uh, we may not uh, see each other that much outside of church, but I see you in church, and you are, each one of you are a blessing to me, and uh, I thank the Lord for you, for this church. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. You know, I just, on a like maybe a lighter note, and we're all talking about big things, and I want everything that I thought I would say, Donna said, so, <laughs> and ditto. But there's so many, so much that God is so involved in our lives. And I remember when I was teaching Sunday school teenagers, and this young man from a rather large family, and we asked them to go around the circle and say what they were thankful for, and he said, clean socks. And we all laughed. And he said, when you're in a family as big as ours, you run for the socks. And, and today, I got socks that fit me, and it was really cute. But it's so true. God cares about everything. And the other night, I was making a new recipe. And I wanted, it, I wanted my husband to really like it, and I'd never made it before. And I prayed over it, and it was wonderful. And when I got up the next day, I thought, Lord, you were in that recipe. And, and it's, not the, it's not always the big things. It's that he cares about every little thing in my life. Every little thing, whether I have socks to wear or whether I have food to put on my table that's, that's palatable and good. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to thank him for his absolute care of me in every area of my life. He is so great and so greatly to be praised. Thank you for that. Someone else? Some of you may know that uh, the last couple of years have been tough going through cancer and treatment and radiation and chemo and all that stuff. Debbie and I gave this to God three years ago when it started, and he has been more than faithful. And I am just so thankful that I've had this, that I could be a witness to people around me as they're watching the healing and like that. Uh, and I'm reminded of a song that I came across years ago. It's called The Blind Plowman. And it said, you made me blind that my soul could see. Well, one of the side, if you call it a benefit that God did with me was, I used to be a tenor and proud of that. And now I'm a bass. <laughs> And I'm thankful to God for everything he's done, not only in my body, but in our marriage. He's brought us much closer together and brought us to this church, which has blessed us immensely. And I'm grateful for that and thankful. God be praised. Thanks, Dave. Someone else. We don't want to leave anyone out. Hey, 
as uh, the auctioneer says, going once, <laughs> going twice. Oh, we do have a praise. Okay. You want to hang on to that or not? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if I can be on camera and, and run it at the same time. But anyway, um, I'm thankful for the generosity of the church. Um, when we were asked in March if we could broadcast the service, we said probably. Um, <laughs> and you guys stepped up and provided all of the equipment we asked for and, and said, are you sure this is enough? You know, do you need more? And uh, we're very grateful uh, that we, you've enabled this ministry. Thank you. I just want to say that um, it's so easy for everyone to be negative with everything that's gone on this year. And it's easy to be caught up in everyone's negativity. I know everyone's been through a lot, our family included. We did lose a lot this year, but we also gained a lot. Things were tough, but it brought us closer together, strengthened our relationships. And I think it's important. We have wonderful memories. We had wonderful parents as examples, and we're able to hold those memories close. And I think it's important that we each be sure to not miss the small things, the positive things, everything that God provides every day, and celebrate those little things. Thank you for that. Someone else. We certainly don't want to leave anyone out. Being, a, being an Audi guy, I should know better than that. <clears throat> I want to thank you, uh, thank the church, and uh, for really standing behind the youth ministries in this uh, in this town. Uh, Sue and I have been involved in uh, Marion Youth Center and Sunday School for a number of years, and we, we just uh, really appreciate the fact that kids come and and just with, through that small effort, uh, they they can hear the word of God. Uh, just even coming out of the schools, off the streets. Uh, they have no prior uh, learning or background, uh, but, but just the moment to, that we get uh, a few minutes or hours each week, each time we meet, uh, to grow that faith and just uh, open their eyes to the Word of God, the love of Christ, and to have a partner that uh, is very encouraging in that area and, to, uh, uh, and she just seeks uh, ways to minister to kids through foster care kids that we have in our home. Uh, whether it's families that we can uh, uh, help out along the way. I'm just uh, really uh, blessed to have Sue in my life. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Anyone else? I want to give everyone a chance. I guess not. That's it. Thank you so much for participating. And uh, I, I would just give a testimony, a short one. Uh, certainly thank you for uh, accepting me and uh, into the church and into the fellowship. That was a, a great blessing. And uh, thank you for being with me. There was many of you that uh, have prayed and uh, for me and uh, have been kind to me, has sent cards, uh, phone calls, and especially uh, Pastor and his wife. Pastor's been a gem through this year. Uh, you might say well, it's been a tough year with the COVID and uh, my wife passing, but uh, it's also been a good year. It's been a good year. We've 
we have a, I have a great family, not only of Christian friends, but of physical children. And uh, they've been a blessing to me too. Sometimes they drive me nuts a little bit because they don't want me to be alone ever. But, but uh, that's okay, I'm getting used to it. And uh, they're getting used to me to say, no, I think I'll stay home tonight. And uh, so that's a, certainly a blessing. And, and uh, we certainly praise God for everything he's done in my life and my wife's life while she was here. And I have that great assurance of seeing her again. And uh, I certainly thank God for that and uh, certainly praise him for that. Thank you so much. I do have a brief meditation I'd like to share before we close the service. And I do want to express thanks um, to the team that stepped in March 15th was the last in-person service we had. And yet, when the 22nd rolled around, there was a team in place already, some hiding back there, um, the Skidmores and others. Um, it was just something to go from no broadcast, essentially other than putting the recordings of the sermons online, to all of a sudden now we're online. Um, and I thank God for that. Um, I'm not sure if I had said this before, but um, I did, I guess, at the congregational meeting. My thought initially was that they can watch Chuck Swindoll or Charles Stanley on TV and they'll get a good sermon. And then Denise kind of chided me and said, but you're our pastor. So then the online services went on. So. I'd like to, uh, if you have your Bibles with, I'd invite you to turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And I'd like to introduce it in this way, and this is going to tie in with some of, something that Donna said just a few minutes ago. And that is, um, getting there, uh, we expect important people to live in beautiful homes with beautiful furnishings. Our president and his wife all our presidents and their wives have lived in the White House, a beautiful, a magnificent mansion, and, you know, very tastefully appointed. Um, some of the furniture in there is very old, and it's a building that is full of history. Um, just as magnificent. It's one of those things where if you go and visit, um, you're awed. And our state governors also live in mansions, and likewise are very tastefully appointed and you know, furnished and so forth. We expect important people to live in beautiful homes with beautiful furnishings. Even though the heaven of heavens couldn't contain him, God pleased to dwell in a home among his people. First, it was the Old Testament tabernacle, the tent of worship, where he made his special presence to dwell. And then it was Solomon's magnificent temple. And if you were to uh, add up some of the materials that went into just the tabernacle and its furnishings, you were looking at a ton plus of gold, 2,193 plus pounds of gold, and 7,544 pounds of silver plus, not alone all the other precious things that went into that. We expect important people to live in beautiful homes, well furnished. Well, the important persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit lived in that beautiful home, the tabernacle and the temple with the beautiful furnishings in Old Testament times. And yet as beautiful as that home was, in the New Testament, our God lives in even more beautiful houses, beautiful to him. Jesus is God's temple. He is the word of God come in the flesh, and Jesus called his own body a temple. He was speaking about his resurrection when he told his enemies, 
regarding his body, you know, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it again, referring to his body, his temple. And we're told in scripture that in Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Our Lord Jesus Christ is God's beautiful home, his beautiful temple. But there's more, and that is in union with Christ. Believers are also his beautiful temple in which he dwells by the Holy Spirit. When a sinner trusts in Christ for salvation, when a sinner is born again and receives Christ for salvation, he or she also becomes God's temple, the place where he dwells. And so if you think of it, when God looks upon Jesus and looks upon his people in Jesus, he sees a beautiful temple, a beautiful temple. And with Christ as our covering, his spirit furnishes his temple with all manner of gorgeous graces and furnishings that ornament his worship. When we become Christians, we, be, we receive the white robe of righteousness. We receive the ornaments of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit in us that beautify us, love, joy, peace, patience, and all those others. We receive gifts and abilities to serve. And Peter, in, in what we're going to read in a moment, Peter goes on to describe how the Lord makes his people his holy temple. And then he goes on to describe the kind of worship that goes on in that temple. Because not only are we who are believers in Christ, not only are we his temple, but we are also his priests under Christ, serving under Jesus, the great high priest. So now I'm gonna read verses one through 10 of 1 Peter chapter two. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you've tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be an holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And our Thanksgiving meditation is gonna focus on verse five about us as believers being a holy priesthood and especially we want to look at what is our unique and our peculiar work, and that is to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Old Testament Israel's priests offered up sacrifices, but they were material sacrifices. They served in a tent of worship or a building of worship that was made out of physical materials. Um, and they offered up material sacrifices. They offered up the lifeblood of bulls and goats and sheep and even pigeons or doves. And they offered up grain offerings and offered up incense, all physical materials. And they offered these up on physical altars that were either made of bronze or that were made of gold overlaid acacia wood, physical altars. But through our Lord Jesus, Believers are a spiritual house of worship to offer up spiritual sacrifices on a spiritual altar, and that altar is our heart, our spirit. One of the hymns, old hymns puts it this way. Teach me to love thee as thine angels love. 
one holy passion filling all my frame. The kindling of the heaven descended dove, my heart an altar, and thy love the flame. Priests offer sacrifices, and Jesus has made us priests to God. So what are the spiritual sacrifices that we are to offer to God? Well, first of all, I'll tell you what they aren't. None of these sacrifices are payment for sins. None of them atone for sins, because Jesus did that once for all time when he died for us sinners on the cross. The only acceptable sin sacrifice is the one that God provided himself in Jesus, his son, Jesus' death on the cross. And when a sinner repents and comes to see their need of the Savior and trusts in Christ for salvation, God takes and he counts and he credits and he reckons to that sinner, puts to that sinner's account Christ's sacrifice for sins. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us and his enduring priesthood for us ever in the presence of the Father on our behalf, these and these alone make our worship and us as worshipers acceptable to God. Okay, that's what spiritual sacrifices are not. So what are these acceptable spiritual sacrifices that please God and that satisfy his heart? And ultimately, whenever the Bible uses the word spiritual, it has reference to the Holy Spirit. Um, and these sacrifices that are spiritual, they have to do with what the book of the Spirit, the Bible, instructs us that God wants us to give him, the kind of obedience that we are to offer up. And that kind of obedience that is mixed with love and with thankfulness to God and with a desire to, to glorify him, to bring him uh, credit and acknowledgement, if you will. The offering, and these are things that affections in us that the Holy Spirit creates and stirs up, right? These are not natural to us. To love God is not natural to our old nature. But the new nature that the Spirit creates in us, love for God is natural and also a looking to him, an orientation toward him. Offerings that God accounts beautiful and pleasing are that because he sees something of himself in them. He sees some characteristic of himself in them and likeness. They're beautiful because they shine out with his excellences. Peter says in verse 9 that um, he's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out. An example, living a distinctively Christian life of good works, a Bible faithful life. Not that we're trying to impress anyone, but simply following the Lord, sincerely following him. That is a sacrifice that is pleasing to God. In verses 11 and 12, Peter, it's the context. Peter says, beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which war against your soul Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. It's part of what Jesus said um, about letting men see your good works, that they may glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Another example of a spiritual sacrifice is an act of practical love for one another in Christ. It's, it's part of that sacrifice of praise that reflects the love between the persons of the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit love one another with a perfect love. And when we love one another with that love of Christ, we are reflecting that excellence of God. And Peter talked about this in chapter 4 and verse 8. He said, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Loving one another with the love of Christ 
is a sacrifice, spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So is contentment in Christ. Liking what we, God has given us and also trusting him um, for taking care of us in Hebrews chapter 13. And Tom already read part of this. But in Hebrews 13 and uh, verse 5, we read this. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? And you know, this morning, even though it wasn't the exact same words, we heard that expressed multiple times. Just the confidence that the Lord will take care of us and he will supply. And then in verses 15 and 16, what Tom had read, through him then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And you know, these are things that can be done in word, a testimony that way. They can be done in song, but they also can be done in actions. And we've heard about that and we've seen that this morning. And all of these things are beautiful to him. And so is drawing near to the Lord in prayer, especially when we breathe out in our prayers a longing for God and a longing for greater holiness like God's holiness. I mean, we all come, he's glad when we come to him with our lists of things because everything good has to come from him. But he also loves it when his children come and say, I want you. When my aunt and uncle passed away, they left us an inheritance. And when we found out about that, the thought in my mind, and I'll bet it's the thought in many of your minds, was, that's nice, but I'd sure rather have Aunt Uncle Walt and Aunt Louise back. Rather have you. And that's how it is for us. God, I'd rather have you. And we heard some of that this morning already. Um, and with such sacrifices, he is pleased. And this idea, this prayer, this longing in prayer, um, in Revelation 8, there's the imagery of incense smoke ascending up to heaven. And it's the imagery of the prayers of God's people ascending up before him. And in Psalm 141, David prays, let my prayer be counted as an incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice something that smells sweet to God, that pleases him. These are some of the kind of spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. One more that I would mention is that kind of self-sacrifice is reflected, that kind of spiritual sacrifice is reflected in believers who lay down their lives for others. Maybe not just all at one time, that has happened, where people have given their lives to save others. But we also lay down our lives for others in little pieces at times. Um, Jesus says, greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. There are times when we want to do something and there is something that we see God wants us to do and it may come through a friend's voice of need or a stranger's voice of need. I had planned to do this. I have my list to fulfill. And then this happens, the interruption. Well, what do we do? Well, you know what, you know, the, the, you can pretty well guess what God would have you do, um, a legitimate need and so forth. And so you, Give up your own will and you do the thing that is needful for the other person. Well, what have you done? Well, you've essentially laid down your will, your life for that other person. You've given them a piece of you that you can't get back. 
With such sacrifices, the Lord is well pleased. God lives in us. We're his temple. We are all, and our work, our life's work, is that we are his priests to offer up sacrifices acceptable to him, of which praise and thanksgiving are a large part. The last thing I want to say, and it's very brief, is if you just think about that, those words, the, the sacrifices acceptable to God, another translation for that is pleasing to God. And just the thought that we sinners, we vessels of clay, just the thought that we could actually please the God of the whole universe is just amazing to me. But he says we can and we believe him. To him be the glory and the thanks. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the worship of your people that you stir up by your spirit, these testimonies of thanksgiving, the ones who have been spoken out, but also know there are others that have certainly been thought, and you've heard those too. We thank you for that. We pray that you will help us, Lord, to walk ever closer to you, that we might live out our lives as that holy priesthood of believers, um, and that you would help us to be mindful of, of our lives that we would indeed offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you through Christ Jesus. If they're not in him, they're not acceptable, but in him. O oh, great God and heavenly Father, thank you that they bring you pleasure. In Jesus' name, amen.